Race three of the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Cup Tour and a return to Lake Placid in the upstate New York Adirondack Mountain region. This double Olympic venue in 1932 and 1980 boasts one of the toughest driver's tracks on the planet and a fabulous new ice house where the push competitions were held the weekend between Park City and the racing in Lake Placid. After a heavy snowstorm on the Thursday night, the first track action, Friday, was for the skeleton. Former winner Axel Junk, taking gold on this track in 2019, ended the first run tied for fifth position with teammate and Olympic champion Christopher Grothair. Austin Florian of the USA had a great run from a top eight position to be the leader at this stage, but Axel Jung proved that three seasons away from the track for the European sliders have not dulled their abilities. And a great second heat kept him narrowly in front of the US slider at the line. Nice sweater though. With nothing separating them, Axel Junk and Christopher Grothair went head to head on a one run shootout. Grothair's never had a medal on this track. Both of his teammates have. That was all perhaps about to change as the Olympic champion laid down an absolutely perfect second heat, looking completely relaxed on what is a very tricky Lake Placid track. Getting through mistake free is all but impossible but the way that he shot the chicane showed exactly how much speed he was going to have at the line and he eased away by over a third of a second. Grothair was still the leader as we got to the top three. Jong Seung Gui of Korea, 37 hundredths away from the leader. Not the most comfortable of loads onto the sled and that rather set the tone for the rest of the run. He did have time in hand initially over Christopher Grothair but that margin decreased with every turn. And Jung just didn't seem to have the composure on the sled that he'd had in the first run. Maybe the adjustments he'd made weren't working. Maybe the track had moved away from where he thought it was going to be. Either way, he fell back into second place. The final two sliders remained, both British. Marcus Wyatt, the winner in Whistler, remains the World Cup point leader coming into race three in Lake Placid, but he too was having a little bit of a tougher time of it in the first heat. We're getting on for two tenths of a second in hand as he started the run that had soon evaporated. Mistakes early on here, as at most tracks, are brutally punished. His gap came down and the speed was not where he needed it to be. There was too much ice between him and the finish line and it was soon clear that the World Cup points leader was not going to finish in the lead on this run. The question is, would he remain in the medals? Third at the line, one to go. Final slider had been a long way clear of his rivals in the first heat. Matt Weston of Great Britain had 28 hundreds in hand over second, 37 over third and 45 hundreds in hand over Christopher Grothair from the first heat. Another big strong start from Weston and a cool calm and collected second run meant that even when errors crept in he didn't overreact. Out of Shady 2, the midpoint, he still had a handy enough advantage and though the speed wouldn't match Grothair his time taken over the two runs would. The speed dropped away and with it the margin, but it was enough to win by 16 hundredths of a second, his second career gold medal. Matt Weston, the winner from Christopher Grothair with Jung Sung Gui rounding out the podium. And this time, Weston shares the medal with no one. Jung is now our points leader at the Christmas break. It had been a great race for the men in the morning and the women's encounter in the afternoon promised much more of the same. 
In a tie for eighth place after the first of the two heats, the USA's Kelly Curtis, the 33-year-old, returning to top form this season as she takes on a full World Cup campaign. And after two decent openers in the first races, including a career-best fifth place in Park City two weeks earlier, she was looking for more here. Coming from behind to overhaul Mimi Reneva, who's a quicker starter with whom she was tied after the first run. And Curtis laid down a masterclass at the bottom of the track, making it look like Lake Placid was absolutely no drama at all, smoking to a 55-6-0 run, way clear of her rivals. Kelly Curtis still led, having disposed of the Olympic champion Hannah Neiser as we got to the bronze medalist from the Games, Kimberly Boss. She was in fourth place, just 17 hundreds out of the medals. Surely her experience would allow her to hang on, but Kimberly's second run was not quite what her first had been. She'd been in touch with the medalists, but it was not to remain that way. And as the meters ran out underneath her, so did the time. Only the seventh best speed at the chicane, she too would drop behind the flying American who led with her teammates joining her in the ugly sweaters in the leader's box. Olympic silver medalist Jackie Narakot was in sight of a medal after the first heat, third fastest, some degree better than her best ever previous result on this track, which was seventh. But again, the lead over Kelly Curtis evaporated early. She was just 15 hundreds away from the medals from the first heat. But if she couldn't stay in front with only two sliders remaining, Kelly Curtis would be guaranteed her first ever World Cup medal and on home ice. Good speed from Jackie Noah cut down at the bottom, but it wasn't good enough. Four hundreds of a second in it. It was going to be close, but she just couldn't get there. Two to go then, and young Suzanne Kreia of Germany in only her fifth World Cup start compared to 12 of Kelly Curtis, her rival, the 23-year-old, with a chance of the medals. She and leader Tina Herman had only been three hundredths of a second apart in the first heat, and Kreia, already with a good season in her debut in the World Cup behind her, was looking to add to that. She had the lead halfway down, and she managed to hang on to it. Good clean lines, she shot the chicane to carry plenty of speed into the final corners. And at the line, just two hundreds of a second in front, but enough to guarantee her a first World Cup medal. But would it be silver or gold? Only one run to decide it. Tina Herman had led by not much, but a mobile phone in the track had phased her slightly in her first run in the early going. There was no such drama this time down, and having dropped behind briefly from the start, she did what she does so well, built speed all the way down the track. With a run so relaxed and so neat and tidy, it made it look like she was on home ice in Germany and not 5,000 miles away on the other side of the Atlantic. Lake Placid for Tina Herman has always been a bogey track. She's only ever had a bronze medal here, but in the final World Cup of 2022, the penny dropped. Everything felt good, she said, and she won by three tenths from first time podium finishers Suzanne Crea and Kelly Curtis. And it's Tina Herman who's now the World Cup points leader. Technical dramas at Mount Van Hovenberg, unrelated to the track itself, moved the monobob encounter to Saturday afternoon. And home fans would be rooting for the Olympic and world champion Kaylee Humphreys. Switzerland's Melanie Hassler had been lying in sixth position after the first of the two heats, and the tall athlete produced another strong start to get herself going nicely. Bianca Ribi, the winner in Whistler, her first ever World Cup race, was the leader at this stage, but Hassler had her covered right from the start. And a neat, tidy drive, correcting a couple of errors that had crept in in the first heat, not derailed by the chicane. Melanie Hassler speeding towards the line at 75 miles an hour to take the lead by four tenths of a second. 
Next up, Germany's Kim Kalicki. Not the greatest fan of the monobob, but because it is an Olympic discipline, she is fighting hard to find her form. She dropped behind Hassler right from the start. There was precious little between them after the first of the two heats. And in a race that had seen the track record broken five times in the first run, the ice was not quite as fast in the second heat. And that seemed not to work in Kalicki's favor. A little bit more grip, but not quite enough speed to challenge the Swiss driver. And she dropped back. Fourth after the first of the two heats, Cynthia Appiah. The Canadians having a great season so far and was looking to move up into the medals. A good strong start, not quite on her start record pace, but Appiah settled nicely into the beginning of the run. And then disaster, rolling the sled dramatically. She would eventually cross the line, physically okay, but at the tail of the field, she gets points for ninth position but any hope of a medal here before Christmas had gone. Three sleds remained then, including Lisa Butvic. She was in third after the first heat, having broken the track record and the start record held by Cynthia Appiah in her first push. She didn't match the start record, but she had enough in hand to match Melanie Hassler. Bukvitz had won the monobob and the women's push worlds the previous weekend in the ice house at Lake Placid. She's in very strong form and was driving well too. Skid in the chicane, but she didn't panic, corrected it nicely and kept her speed to the line, enough to guarantee herself at least a bronze medal. Team USA's Kaylee Humphreys, 2400s ahead of Bukwitz after the first run. But it was less Bukwitz and more her German teammate Lara Nolte, who led after the first heat, who Kaylee Humphreys was concerned with. The second run, with a couple of skids early on, looked better than Kaylee's first trip down the track. She, like everybody else, is still finessing how to get the best out of these monobob sleds. But the Olympic and world monobob champion put down a smoking second run. It would take something special to deny her the gold. Final sled on the ice, Lara Nolta. She had led the first heat of the women's monobob race in Whistler, only to crash out when trying to claim victory. The pressure was on. A good strong start, and she'd given barely anything away to Kaylee Humphreys. But midway through the run, she was dropping just a fraction behind. With only a hundredth or two in it, it could easily go either way below corner 10. A good run through the chicane was enough. It gave her the speed to take the advantage through the heart and claim victory, her first ever in women's monobob. Victory for Lauren Alter at last. First run of win. <laughs> and that first win moves her up into second place in the standings behind points leader Kaylee Humphreys. <laughs>
Was it enough of an improvement to overhaul Christoph Hafer of Germany? Hafer with an eye on the medals, fourth place after the first of the two heats and with a slender advantage to Nurse. He dropped back almost immediately, courtesy of Brad Hall's big start. Hafer would now have to work hard to find the speed further down the track. By turn 10, Shady 2, the gap was just six hundredths of a second. Not a tidy chicane either for Harfer, but just about enough speed from the sled to clinch the lead at the line. Germany led with three to go. In third place, Mikkel Vogt and Sandro Michel of Switzerland. Vogt with a really clean first heat, but he would need to produce another one if he was to cling on for his first two-man medal of the season. And it was a top draw drive from Vogt, clearly relishing the feel of this Lake Placid track. Big height in Shady, but he controlled it nicely and leading Christoph Hafer all the way down. A great run through the chicane with no dramas through the heart. And up at the line, it was Mikkel Vogt by half a second. In second place after the first heat, with just four hundreds in hand over the Swiss lead, Francesco Friedrich and Alexander Schuller. It's rare that Friedrich is beaten in a two-man. It hasn't happened since Segulda last spring. But the last time the two-man races were here, a double two-man weekend, Friedrich was beaten. Lochner won the first race, Friedrich the second, and they took a silver medal apiece. How would this work out in 2022? Well, Friedrich had enough in hand to start creeping away despite a slightly scrappy chicane and held his lead six hundreds just over Mikkel Vogt. Lochner and Georg Fleischhauer, making his two-man World Cup debut, had 17 hundreds of a second in hand. Would it be enough? In training, Hansi had struggled in the four-man, normally his favoured discipline, but had definitely found the rhythm in the two-man. And right from the start of the run, it looked like he had it firmly under control. Smooth, fluid lines and no major dramas early on. He was building his advantage over Friedrich. A clean chicane gave him the top speed into the heart and he made no mistakes this time, taking it by three tenths of a second. His sixth career two-man win, his second in Lake Placid. Friedrich taking silver, Mikkel Vogt in the bronze, but for the rookie brakeman Georg Feischauer, it was a big day, and Hansi Lochner moves up to second in the standings. <laughs> Sunday and the final day of World Cup action of the year before the Christmas and New Year break. First on the ice, women's bobsleigh, and a chance perhaps for hometown hero Kaylee Humphreys to strike for gold. Canada's Bianca Ribi in a tough battle with her own teammate Cynthia Appiah after the first of the two heats in Lake Placid. And a good start from the Canadian. They were only a couple of hundreds apart after the first run. And with Appiah in the leader's box, it was important that Ribi did not give time away. 400s in hand just in front as she got out of Shady 2 and then a good run through the bottom part of the track was enough to build the speed she needed to take the lead at the line and come out on top in the Battle of the Canucks. Lisa Bookwitz had been fourth after the first heat. She, Reby and Appiah were covered by a tenth of a second, so she too had a slender advantage from the start. The fastest starting athlete in the field though added another tenth of a second to that before she even sat down. And then it was hers to give away. She didn't have the greatest speed early on, but a three tenths lead midway at Shady 2 looked to be enough. It was down to two tenths by the chicane, one tenth going into the heart, and at the line she was tantalizingly shy, just two hundreds behind. The Canadians held the lead. 
three sleds to go. Two of them have raced on this track before. Three years ago, in 2019's double races, Kim Kalicki took a bronze and a silver. Could she add a gold to that, as she has done so far this season in Whistler and Salt Lake City? Well, she had enough to keep Bianca Riebe behind her, but would she have enough to challenge for the gold? Only the fourth best speed through curve 10 and a rattly chicane. 4,200s ahead of Riebe. That gap came down to the line but she had a medal. Two sleds remaining, both driven by Olympic champions. Lauren Alter, the 2022 Olympic champion, coming off her first ever monobob win 24 hours earlier. Enough to really give her a feel-good feeling in Lake Placid, and it showed. She was only 500s off the lead in the first heat. It was definitely going to be a tight one for gold. First job, though, was to stay in front of Kim Kilicki, and she did, just gradually adding to her two-tenths advantage over her compatriot all the way down. Best speed into the heart, and out of 19, climbing uphill to 20, she took the lead by nearly half a second. Was that enough for gold? Kaylee Humphreys has two straight wins on this track in the last races in 2019. A total of six in her career, including the 2012 World Championship gold. And with Keisha Love back behind her for the first time since the Olympics, they were on all 12 cylinders away from the start. And Kaylee needed a great drive to seal the deal. She produced another one, straight through the chicane as if it was easy to do. Good enough speed at the line and a great bottom part of the track. 1200s in front, her first win of the season in the last race of 2022. Lara Nolte and Kim Kalicki completing the podium. Germany have not won here since 2010, but it is Kim Kalicki who's got a 25 point lead in the driver's standings. The big beasts headed to the track in the afternoon for the final hurrah in Lake Placid, the four-man bobsleigh. And this time, Francesco Friedrich was loaded for bear. Switzerland's Cedric Follador has just started driving in the World Cup this season, and the rookie pilot has had a good run of it so far. In the leader's box as he started his second run was the USA's Frank Del Duca, who'd been 11th in the first heat and had driven himself up to the fringes of the top six. Follador had time in hand at the start, but his ride was not quite as neat and tidy as he might have hoped. The low shady, it all got a little fast, but he had just enough in hand to cling on and take the lead at the line. A World Cup best result for Follador. Not necessarily though for Johannes Lochner. After the first heat, the top five were covered by 14 hundreds of a second. Frankly, any of them could have been in the medals, and on this track, realistically, any of them could have won. Lochner won the two-man the previous day with a pretty wild pair of rides, but had not been feeling the love for the four-man all week long. Nevertheless, his first run was tidy enough to put him in the frame, and his second looked like it might do the same, building his advantage over Follador all the way down the track to hang on. 3600s in front, René Spies not convinced that was enough for the gold. Francesco Friedrich hadn't enough in the first heat to get into the top three, but he is a resilient competitor. Silver medalist in the two-man the previous day, this is one of the few tracks where he has never won in a four-man in all his career. And three years away hasn't helped his intimacy with the track either. Nevertheless, he was quickly into the lead over Lochner, and extended his advantage by a couple of hundreds early on. But by the midpoint, it was down to just three. And from there on, he needed his special touch of magic to pull away. Three sleds still remain, first of whom was Great Britain's Brad Hall. 
The crew had been just a hundredth of the fastest start in the first heat, but tied Lochner's crew for it in the second, giving their driver every opportunity to cling on in the medals. Brad's already got four four-man silvers and a bronze under his belt and has had a good start to the season throughout North America in two-man and four-man. But perplexed at where the speed had gone in the two-man, he didn't hold up much hope for finding it in the four-man. The first run showed that he had it, and the second, well, he was just a hundredth in front of Friedrich with two to go. Had he denied the great German a medal of any colour? Only two sleds remained, and with Hall in the leader's box, we were guaranteed a first-time winner. But who? Just 100 that separated Switzerland's Mikkel Vogt from the lead in the first heat, but a disaster in the start. He almost lost one of his crewmen, and it wrote off any opportunity they had of taking a medal. So much drama at the start, the sled sideways all over the track. It'll have to wait for another day which meant it would either be Brad Hall winning or Christoph Harfer. Harfer had just six hundredths of a second in front. His previous World Cup best came two weeks earlier in Park City in race two of the season, where he claimed a bronze. Leading after the first heat and with the dressing room emptying around him, would he be able to hang on? It was nerve-bitingly close. Just nine hundredths in it at Shady 2, corner 10, but the gap extended. He didn't have the greatest chicane, and it was victory for Brad Hall by seven hundredths of a second. Team GB claiming their first gold medal since Lamin Dean won in Whistler in 2017. The boys gave themselves a great early Christmas present. They remain second in the World Cup standings, but this day will live in their memories for a long while. A busy North American swing comes to a close at the end of the Lake Placid weekend. Two weeks of Christmas New Year break and training and sliding before we get back to World Cup action at Winterberg in Germany. We'll see you then in 2023.